want to welcome everybody to the long show. I'm here with Sandy, the director of the Keene Senior Center. I want to welcome you. Thank you. Glad to be here. We're going to do something a little unusual this time. It's going to be a two-part show. The, got Labor Day weekend, so we're not going to be here on Monday. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, we've got about 60 minutes of actual live footage on site at the Senior Center. So we'll show part of it for this show. We'll have a discussion, and then we'll show part of it for next week's show. That's wonderful. And um, <clears throat> before we go on to the on-site, your funding, the major contributor of your funding is the Senior Center. I mean, not the, of the Senior Center is the United Way, isn't it? That's correct. There are local grant, community grant process that does fund us the most, yes. And um, I know the United Way has had some difficulty, especially last year with these economic times. I hate using that word because it's know. overused. <laughs> but Keene is a, is a really great community. They do their best to really help their fellow um, citizens. But it was a little rough last year with the United Way. It was. I think uh, the economy did really hit Keene last year and caught up with it, let's say. And uh, everybody uh, did what they felt they could last year. And the community does come together. Uh, we may be a city, but we're a small city with strong community spirit. And I think it was tough going for everybody to adjust to the way things are these days. And unlike a, a lot of communities around the country and even in the state, the city doesn't fund, fully fund the senior centers. That's correct. Uh, typically, townships don't. Cities and townships don't. Most are freestanding or they're connected through a community action program uh, under the Older Americans Act through the Meals Program or uh, if they are in some way under the city, um, Sometimes parks and rec, it falls under, but mostly what it is is under human services or under, for instance, Portsmouth, Portsmouth it is under the um, housing authority, actually. So it's under many different aspects, depending on where they feel the services are best rendered. And the city, as one of its community actions, the city what spends, donates about or gives about a grant, about $7,000 a year to the senior center? Well, we write our grant every year, and at this time they have given us $7,000, yes. And so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to what we normally do. We did the on-site, and I, we just think it's better that you can answer so many questions on-site instead of just sitting right here. <laughs> okay, and so when, when we finish the on-site, we'll come back and have some more discussions. Great. Thank you. Good day. My name is Chris Roberts. We're here with another chapter of The Long Road. I'm here with Sandy, the director of the Keene Senior Center. How do you do? It's good to see you. And it's always great to have these shows out in the public instead of just sitting in the office or sitting in the room. The Keene Senior Center, it has a long history. But let's go for the name. Is the Keene Senior Center just limited to Keene residents? No, it's not. It's open to anybody in the area. In fact, a lot of our members come within a 50-mile radius. And so, as an always membership, what's it? it's about? What's the um, dues? Do dues is forty dollars a year. Forty dollars a year, not forty dollars a month, just forty dollars a year. Forty dollars a year. And we know that we have a lot of um, elderly who are on Social Security. Yes. And with the high taxes and other ones, they have very little money to spare. What happens if they don't have $40 right up front to pay? Well, we have what's called a punch card membership, and that has 14 punches, and it's $3 each time they come in and use the senior center. And then that last punch is a dollar, and voila, their membership is paid for. So it makes it very economical, and they can budget it within their fixed income. So if someone comes and plays cribbage and he has to pay, after a certain amount of cribbage games, his membership's already paid up. Correct. And so um, the, the King Senior Center, this building has a, a, a wide history. It's, you had the Kingsbury Foundation. They donated quite a bit to get this King Senior Center. Yes. And it's, I always have trouble pronouncing, Ernie Ledger, is it Ledger? Yes, Ledger. Who, who helped donate the building to get this um, the Senior Center going. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. And so we've been here since 1967. 
a very, very long time. Beautiful old building, but it is an old building. It is, it, it is an old building. <laughs> and it's amazing how you've had people, you, you've had a lot of volunteers from all different types of organizations keeping this old building upright. Yes, absolutely. I don't know what we do without our volunteers. They really make a difference. And we talk about the, the Keene Senior Center, and now we're talking about different people talking about budgets and stuff. We have a very austere budget here. What, about 160000 a year? 160000 that's right. And how many members do you have? Almost 400. So 400, 160000 for 400 members, that isn't very much. Not very much at all. So you really count on the generosity of a lot of organizations. We do. It, we are, in a sense, a community center for retired folks. And so we're a part of the community in so many ways. We help others in the community. Many of our seniors also volunteer for other organizations in the community. It helps keep the seniors vital and living a quality of life, uh, building new friendships, and being a part of the community in many ways. And so uh, we hope that community members support us as well. We'll all be at that age one day. <laughs> Well, we're speaking about age. When people talk about retirement, senior centers, seniors are not 60, 65, 70 years old. I know you have some 70 <laughs> and higher, but what is the magic eligibility number that may irritate a lot of people? <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's 50 and over, and really that's based on the AARP retirement Retire. age, so to speak, although many of us are still working. <laughs> 50 and over, and we do have members in their 50s, and we do have members in their 60s, quite a few. And uh, our largest membership is between 70 and 85, but I'll tell you, some of those people have way more energy than I could possibly have. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so what we'll do now is we'll like to go walk around the building, show some of the activities. I know this isn't in a busy day, but for example, Meals on Wheels. The Meals on Wheels program, how do they interact with the Senior Center? Well, through uh, HCS, Home Health Care Community Services and Hospice, they have what's called a friendly meal, and we have a friendly meal every Wednesday through them. Uh, as far as actually Meals on Wheels themselves, we're also a referral service here for caregivers, family members of seniors, and senior spouses themselves. They walk into the Senior Center or call us, and ask, what do I do in this situation? And we help refer them to HCS or Service Link, which is so important in the community as well, as well as any other, it could be housing options and so forth, and we'll give the names of everybody. It's, it's a great center for people to go to for that referral information. There's really nothing else around. I know that the community kitchen does a great job. In a perfect world, we would have no need for a community kitchen. Yes. But the community kitchen, unfortunately, with the economy, divorces, and other ones, we have more and more women with children going to the community yes. kitchen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that really creates a problem if you're 75 or 80 years old. We still have that old Yankee tradition. They're worrying about, well, I don't need help. If I need help, um, I'm a failure. And so a lot of elderly, they don't eat, they don't get the proper nutrition, and they're too proud to go to mm -hmm. a really active, bustling community kitchen. Mm -hmm. That's true for many people. Uh, here, it's for all levels of people that can come. It can be the needy, it can be for anybody that wants to join for the socialization and have a good meal. Maybe they can't cook so well for themselves anymore. There's too much arthritis in their hands. Or they can't stand as long in the kitchen anymore. and so They can't lift a cast iron frying pan they may have. So uh, it may be very hard for them to cook for themselves at home. And also the idea of getting out of the house and having a meal with somebody is so important. And so between the friendly meals on Wednesdays and Genesis actually puts on a free meal on Tuesday, the second Tuesday of every month, and then Westward and Langdon Place puts on a beautiful buffet uh, last Friday of every month here. Um, two things. One is Langdon Place. Well, they're doing something today, so we'll go down and yes, watch them. Yes. But the other one you really hit, and I think a lot of people forget about, okay, you can have a perfect nutrition, 
but for seniors, just like, and maybe more for seniors, but just like almost everyone, the socialization aspect is so important because on the mental health part, the more I've been reading is senior citizens is one of the greatest growing um, community, maybe not the right word, population. Of, the population of depression. Yes. And if they're stuck in a home, no socialization, no one understands the signs yes. of depression. You need to get Absolutely. them out. Absolutely. And physically, they'll start having problems because they're sitting around, not getting out, walking around, being with others up and down. They're also losing all their muscle strength and so Bones, forth. Mass they're for bone mass, it, it all interrelates, and they're not using their minds by not having conversations with others. Sitting in front of a TV is not using your mind, and uh, so you could start not just depression, but you could start having mental incapabilities, cognitive starts going away. Uh, gee, it's harder to get up out of a chair and getting in and out of bed, because all you do is sit around all day and so forth. It all adds up together for not just a quality of life, but not a healthy life either. Plus, watching TV, I didn't realize how sick I was by watching TV because <laughs> every other commercial is some, <laughs> some drug company saying, you're yes. sick, you're sick, go tell your doctor you're sick. And I go, wow, why would I want to go have a doctor who doesn't know that I'm sick <laughs> and doesn't know what to treat me that I have to get from a commercial? I know. There's plenty of that on TV. <laughs> okay, so we'll go downstairs and take yes. a look at Langdon Place. We will. We're now here at the Keene Senior Center Fitness Room. And you can see this is, you got some quite a bit of equipment, quality equipment. Excellent equipment. We got cable TV. Yes. And, and again, when we were talking about before, I'm a member of the YMCA. Yes. And I have no problem with the YMCA. Uh huh. But I pay about $68 a, a month. Yes. Almost $900 yes. a year to use the exact same equipment mm -hmm. that the Keene Senior Center has right now. Yes, it makes it so affordable for fixed income folks and to think they have state-of-the-art equipment that they can use here at their leisure during our open hours is uh, such an asset for them, such affordability to keep them healthy. And the other part with Keene State College, Keene State College is really into the social and community services. Yes, they are. And so you have physical trainers and other students that are working with geriatrics and kinesiology who are actually coming here to help out. Yes, they do. In fact, every school season, not during the summer, mm. but during the school season, we have Keene State students that come here and they are a personal trainer for the seniors here. And we have a file that keeps the records down here and they can see how they're doing. They're taught how to take their pulse and watch what they're doing and see their progression. And what's great is we've seen people go from that program into the summer and go right ahead. They're used to their system and, they're, and they go, wow, I feel great, you know, and so much better than I did before. And it's a wonderful sy system for them. I have to apologize a little bit for the knocking, but we're going to be going there <laughs> yes. next, right after this, because we've got some active um, citizens and members yes. doing stuff, being creative. And like you talked about before, the health. Yes. And part of, um, this is also part of the Cheshire County 2020 vision of improving yes. the overall health of the community. It's just not for the youngsters and obesity, but it's all the way through. Yes, that's correct. In fact, the Senior Center has been on one of the committees, the Wellness Committee with Vision 2020, last year, and we plan to be much more involved as being part of a champion for health and wellness for seniors in the community. And the hospital and ourselves have really worked together in seeing how we can uh, promote and to continue the life of health and wellness for folks. And over the past couple of years, you got a, you're able to buy a number of these from a wellness grant from the state. Yes, yes. But again, as the state is gone, there isn't very much money there, so. Correct, <clears throat> correct. I do have a story to tell, though. It's wonderful weight machine over here. This was bought by a retired phys ed teacher in the community, and he donated it to us. That was just wonderful that he purchased that. And, it, and it's used. A lot. <laughs> Who is the gentleman's name? <laughs> oh, he doesn't want to be on okay. Sorry. No, no, no problem. Senior moment. <laughs> Senior moment. Okay. But 
But one of the things that is really important, if someone wants to go out and buy something or donate it, they have to understand it's not a 22-year-old college student. There is certain equipment for the seniors, and there yes. has to be certain safeguards there. Absolutely. So if someone wants to donate or someone wants to come and buy, really the best thing to do to keep both people from being disappointed is come and talk first. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is very important. One has to remember what level of health and so forth that we're working with here. We're not looking at someone who's going to come in and lift 40 or 50, no. four or 500 pounds. <laughs> you may be something, I may go and say, wait no. a minute, this machine only goes up to 100 pounds. It's a waste of time. Yes. But if you're an 85-year-old spry lady, you know, doing 15 at 50 is really good. And right. that's the type of equipment you right. want it to need. And we also, because of the treadmills <laughs> and the bicycles, we have elliptors. Um, what we have also are people that have become members after their cardiac rehab at the hospital. And they find that it's very useful to come down here and continue to keep that wellness program going so they don't fall back into the condition that they were at previously. And again, it's the, the social aspect. Yes. You don't, you don't want to go to the Y if you're 60, 70, 80 years old because it's an active place and it can be a loud place and with the music and ESPN on all the time <laughs> it is it's loud a lot of commotion different TVs <clears throat> and also there's a lot of spandex <laughs> you know there's a certain with younger folks a certain yep. competition in yep. workout areas that is not for seniors I mean they just want to be able to come in at their own level and do their thing I've been to Y but I don't know if it's exercise but I think sometimes it's just a modeling agency <laughs> <laughs> you sometimes wonder with the new uh, outfits that are worn these days. <laughs> and this is not the only exercise program the senior center. You have a walking program too. Correct. We have walking programs. We have a hiking program, <laughs> snowshoeing program in the winter. We have an outdoor club. Also, we have Age in Motion here, which is with free weights and balance exercises as well and stretching. We have a uh, very active progressive level, and we have a beginner and lower level. We, so we have that four days a week here. We have Tai Chi. We have yoga, which is wonderful for balance and flexibility and de-stressing. People seem to think you don't have any stress anymore <laughs> because you don't have to worry about the workplace. That is not true. There is more stress now with seniors than ever before. They worry about their taxes that are going up all the time, or Medicare cuts, or um, how do they have the money for the repairs of their home, or can they afford to keep their car anymore, and how can they pay for their supplemental insurance. And it's in the later part of their lives that are becoming very stressful. Yep. And so uh, it's very important to de-stress. Exercise does that as well. And yoga and Tai Chi are wonderful for that. I just got done reading an article this week saying Tai Chi, tai chi, tai chi. is one of the, the best um, treatments for people who suffered from a stroke. Yes. It's highly recommended. It, it is, is de-stressing. It's not physically draining on the body, but it's really important for recovering from the stroke, getting the blood pressure down it with is. all the medications. Absolutely. And, <clears throat> and also you are building strength by your own balance too. Balance and strength by using your own muscles <clears throat> and by the positions that you're in without. So there's no equipment involved. Yeah. Comfortable clothes and you can gain so much from it. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is as we get older, male or female, our balance goes. Mm -hmm. And we're all at risk as for that dreaded fall and fractured hip. Yes, absolutely. And people can die from a fractured hip. Absolutely. Fall prevention is so important. With our bone mass breaking down as we get older, it's bound to happen. The percentages are just so high. And it's such a change of life, and you'll never quite be up to par as you were before. And it's a big trauma to I'm one's a, life. That must be a female thing, because us guys, we always think we're going to be studs forever. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're always going to be that 10% that life isn't going to pull down, right? <laughs> It's our ego. We're just born with that big, massive ego. It can happen to everybody. Everybody except me. That's all those guys say. Okay, now we'll go to um, the place over here. Where we're yes, we'll go see some crafters. Okay. Put it 
right over that spot. She's actually pounding into the aluminum to make the imprint into the silver, but we don't want to leave marks <laughs> on the back of the silver, so she's using a little piece of aluminum flashing like we have on the house. Oh, okay. She's going to do this. She's going to have it. It has gone through. Oh, yeah. A little bit more in yeah, the center, I, just in the uh, very center there. You can almost tell where it hasn't been hit. Okay, and now what you can do is peel up the tape and let's see what you have. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. And you can try to, yeah, just pick it up carefully because you're going to have to get that off the back. But you can see, if you hold it up, you can see your design. Look what she just did, ladies. That's beautiful. Lovely. She did a beautiful oh, that's job. That is yeah. beautiful. So there's one. So, so now her next step is to read the bottom of that little steel stamp right in front of you. Right there. It's not that one. It's a little square one. Is it this one right there? Right there. Yeah. That should say stir. Good morning, ladies. Every, everybody, everybody's ready to be a TV star today? No? <laughs> As we were talking about outside, that the Senior Center is a very old building, built in the yes. 1800s. But at the Senior Center, you make, take advantage of every single space you have. Every little bit of it, yes. <laughs> and as we know, it's, it's a little muggy, a little warm down here. But our members here seem to be enjoying themselves. Yes, today we have uh, through Langdon Place and Maureen, a representative from Langdon Place, is here. Hi. Uh, we always have a craft session or some kind of presentation sometimes, something about health issues. It could be anything. It's always interesting every month. And we always have our folks gather. And today it's about silver jewelry making. So this is really different and exciting for everybody. So that was part of the tapping and hammering we were hearing earlier when we were talking in the fitness room. They're ready to really start working and make something for themselves. And um, I know you're out there, you kept saying, oh, you, maybe some other part is being embarrassed because the place is dirty or, or they're stacked up. But it was no different than my college room, so I think it's, just, it's okay. <laughs> but again, you know, you're really restricted on the room. You, yes. You've got to take advantage of what you have. What we have, in yes. In a perfect world, we wouldn't be down here in the cellar. You'd be upstairs Correct. in a well-lit air-conditioned place. Yes, that's absolutely true. We do try to make use of every nook and cranny we can. And uh, as you can see, we have things stacked up over here. And uh, it's pretty old. There's, it gets very warm down here and so forth and stuffy. And it is in the basement, although it's finished off a bit. <laughs> so what we'll do now for the next couple of minutes, we'll give you the opportunity to go down there and, and talk since you've got the mic. It okay. would be really inappropriate for a gentleman to bend over in front of a lady. <laughs> she, can, she can go down there and we can explain not what's go, actually going on. Sure. Be glad okay. to do that. So, what we're doing today is making silver jewelry. And how are you going to show the ladies to do this? Well, Sandy, I'm a silversmith in oh, my wonderful. spare time. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually brought some of the raw materials. And they're actually going to... Uh, make a pair of earrings, sterling earrings, but they're going to use different processes that we use. They're going to do some using the planishing hammers, they're going to do some dapping in the dapping block. They can either, um, if they want a different design, they could actually, if they didn't want round, which I got ahead, I actually purchased ahead of time for them just to take some of the worry out of it. Um, they could actually do anything they wanted to, but we're working on um, making them something nice to take home. Oh, that's wonderful. And the ladies, are you excited? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. And you'll be artists when you're through with this, your own earrings. Yes, your own true silver work. That's wonderful. We thank you for volunteering oh. your time doing oh, this we're sort of to thing. Be here. It's and a we, wonderful thing. And we thank Maureen, too, for bringing these programs yeah. to the Senior Center. It's, it's so important. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
We are now in what's really a quite archaic computer room, but it's still a valuable computer room. It is. It's a real asset for us. So many seniors, as time has gone on with the technology, the seniors need to learn more and more about this technology. And surprisingly, many seniors have their own laptop computers and desktop computers. And it's a challenge for them to learn about everything. And things are changing so fast, it is for us too. And so we do have this computer lab that's quite outdated, but uh, we do have our classes on Wednesdays. The, um, I have to go back, the, these old, old models. Yes. They were donated to us by the Cheshire Medical Center. Yes. But they are really, really quite outdated, if I remember. Well, like about 125 megabytes of RAM. Yes, and yes. And about, a, I think it was about eight gig hard drive. Yes, yes. <clears throat> That's it, not much for this it, day it, and age. It can't even compete with my baby iPod. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is for seniors, when you think of just the practical uses, mm. not just email and learning the internet mm. and so forth, but everybody's got a digital camera now and they need to learn how to download their pictures onto their computer, what they can do to save them. You need a lot of RAM and so forth yep. to have all that space to hold all those pictures and so forth and all the data and what they can do with that and emailing the pictures or they could set up their own little photo album on the computer and so forth. And then how do they archive those pictures? I mean, just something as practical as that we can't really show in depth here because the systems aren't that up to date to really get involved with a lot of good hands-on experience. With one it. of the things in, in the show, I put about a three minute run of, of slides of different photos around the country. Ah. And in that three minutes, it's a small, small compared to me because I have a 14 meg mm -hmm. camera, but I can't use it on any of these no. because it freezes up because some of my, yes. um, Photos are a six meg. Sure. You can't do it on these computers. No. And when you're talking about the digital um, web um, and digital photo albums, it used to be scrapbooking, it used to be the old yes. booking, but families are no longer nuclear. They're all over the country, all over the world. But in a lot of senior centers, that's how seniors are staying connected with their families. Absolutely. Th through this. Yes, absolutely. It's, email is just so important. And there are seniors now that are receiving pictures from their children about the grandchildren or what the family's doing, where they're living, anywhere in the country or around the world these days, depending where employment is. And uh, they have that connection, even of firstborns and so forth, that they can see it on their computer, you know, and save pictures so important that we keep up to date with all this technology so we can stay connected with yeah, Because all these on the side, if, if my daughter, for example, in Georgia just had a grandson, uh -huh. well, not her, her son, a grandson for us, if she wanted to do a short video and put it up on YouTube, and I'd come here and I can't use these to download anything, or even watch anything on YouTube. No, no. It, they and, are very outdated. <clears throat> yes, yes, that's so true. And, and our, our classes, actually, that we have on Wednesdays with a volunteer, yeah. uh, that's what makes this all possible Absolutely. is the volunteerism. We cannot pay instructors. That um, uh, There's always a waiting list for his classes, always. It fills up immediately. And he can only take seven people at a time here. So this is just a, a shout out, new terms, you know, up to date terms, you know, mm -hmm. got, can't, you know, can't show my age is if there's any companies out there or anybody who are really interesting as they're getting ready to upgrade into Windows 7, yes. you're more than willing to accept quality usable equipment, yes, whether it's monitors or CPUs. Absolutely. We'd love all these to be XPs and a lot more memory in there yeah. and real accessible for. An another goal we'd love to be is wireless. That is really important. I wish we had wireless here. And so people could bring their laptops if they have wireless and, and be here at the senior center to use what they need to. Well, we, I think we can come up with help with the, the wireless, but Great. none of these computers none of these, none of these computers have the capability of going wireless. Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't <coughs> have the technology. <laughs> and, um, and the other part is the Internet. Well, if you want DSL, 
unfortunately, around Keene area, there are still people that do the dial-up. Oh. And dial-up is it's non-existent. It's, it's a waste of your money. It is. And DSL could cost easily thirty to forty dollars for some of the cheapest mm -hmm. ones. Again, a lot of our seniors could not afford five, six hundred dollars a year for DSL. That's correct. To to me or to my kids, where we're texting or they just think it's a right. Mm -hmm. Everybody has it. Mm -hmm. But but for a lot of people, it, it's not a right because they can't afford it. They can't afford it. It is expensive. <clears throat> you know, it's added on to your cable or your telephone bill, whatever access that you use, and uh, there is a price to pay for all that technology too. And what's nice is we're always connected, as you can see Through here. We always have one computer. That's connected so people can check emails or if they want to look up something on the internet. We are connected, but uh, we can't do it with all of them. It's just this one with yes, the sir. old monitoring system, and you can't save anything, obviously, and so forth, but it does have access. And there are people that come in and do use the email uh, to have some communication, but uh, you're absolutely right. If we were all up to date here with the technology and so forth, it would be such a nice asset for the seniors. And we, again, we have more and more seniors who don't even have phones anymore. I'm not yes. like the old Ma Bell that everyone right. could get a basic phone for 10, 12 bucks. But when you talk a, a regular phone now or even a cell phone, they just have no communication unless they come here and use the internet here. Yes, that's very true. Very, very true. Sad but true, unfortunately. Sad but true. Mm -hmm. You okay? Oh, I want to welcome you back. I think a lot of people enjoy the um, video segment, and I think they're going to learn quite a bit from it. I think so, too. I think we all wonder what a senior center is all about, and by seeing what's really going on on the inside, it'll be great for everybody to understand what we're about. And, and the senior center is has a long tradition in the city of Keene. Yes, it does. It was established in 1957, and then in 1965, through uh, Kingsbury Foundation, the building that we are in today was given to us to be used as a senior center. And here's the thing, we talk about senior moments. We go back, if I was born in 1900, I'd probably be dead by now because life expectancy <laughs> was only 47. It was. <laughs> but now, um, back then, yeah, if you had a 25th wedding anniversary, that was really important because chances are you didn't have very many years left. That's correct. <clears throat> but now, the senior center, we have people 70 and 80, even 90 years old. I just saw in the paper in the Keene Sentinel, uh, I think it was Vermont or right on the border. They had a party for about 20 um, seniors, all 90 and over, quite spry. Yes, oh yes. Well, medicine has come a long way, and our lifestyles have come a long way. And so all of us live longer, are healthier, certainly know how to keep us at a better, active, healthier level. And so we're all living longer. And by living longer, we need to have services for seniors. And our population is growing leaps and bounds with this as everybody is becoming what we call a senior, even though our place, 50 and over, is a senior <laughs> because that's the national term. But in reality, uh, anybody of that age with whatever interest can come together and be there. And we, we had talked to so the senior center, you have a number of other agencies that come in and help out, like for example, the Langdon Place, yes. what we saw that. You, some of the other ones for meals and some of the other stuff. What are some of those agencies that really support? Sure. Uh, HCS, Home Healthcare Hospice Community Services, provides our clinics, our flu clinics, our uh, blood pressure clinics. Also, they help with programs of speakers that come in that will give great education to the seniors, up-to-date information, whether it's medical or doctor or something new that's happening out there they should know about. And they provide the uh, friendly meals as well. Now, Langdon Plays, with whom we saw Maureen, uh, uh, with her with a young gal that was teaching silversmithing there. Well, that looked like fun. Um, uh, she brings in wonderful programs, has to do with health, um, as well as fun, great programs for people to do together, s such as that. 
but we also have Westwood or Langdon Place every other month that brings a wonderful uh, buffet for seniors in the community last Friday of each month. And Genesis has a meal for members the second Tuesday of every month. So there is always something by other folks in the community. And also there were other programs, cooking classes. We worked closely with Keene State College. We worked closely with uh, Cheshire Medical Center. We worked closely also with um, um, Antioch as well. So we're really uh, involved. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do right now, a portion of the show, is I always give kind of a little small video clip. Uh-huh. Since it's 90, 95 degrees outside, and it may be for the next couple of days, <laughs> we're going to do this one, make people a little jealous. And I got this one because I go out for walks with my wife in the morning, and I notice that the trees are starting to um, change quite a bit. Yes, they are. So this is about a two and a half minutes, and so maybe this is what se September is going to look like in the Keene area, in New Hampshire area. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the fundraising and some of the other ways that people can help the Senior Center. Okay, we're back. Did that clip make you kind of jealous as the bright colors, the fire colors of New England? <laughs> it was beautiful. And we'll, you know what, we'll see if how many people can guess where some of those places are. One of it is in Keene, because that's the, the backdrop that we have. That's mm -hmm. from Peg Shop Road. Okay, now let's get back to the serious part, the senior center. You're really on a really tight budget. What's your budget? About one hundred fifty, hundred and sixty thousand dollars. About one hundred sixty thousand dollars. And <clears throat> membership, you got about what three, four hundred members. Yes, we have um, between three hundred fifty and four hundred members right at this time. And it's about what is it forty dollars a year? Yes, it is. And what about the people, the seniors who can't afford it? Because we know there's a widowers. They may be on Social Security only five, six hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Taxes are high, utilities are high, it's not cheap to live in the Keene area. How does the Senior Center help them if they can't afford to become members? Well, what we do is we have a punch card membership where they only pay $3 as they come and use the center. They will never, ever pay over the $40 of what anybody else would pay. 
but uh, that makes it affordable and helps them to budget their money a little better instead of having to come up with the forty dollars all at once. And I know we're, it's the end of August, we're getting ready for the United Way, and yes. we're going into the blackout period, which mm -hmm. is important because we don't need um, competition and competitiveness yes. because the United Way does a great job helping an awful lot of agencies, and it's really important to the welfare of the community. Absolutely. One thing we have to remember is United Way does so much for the community that we have to make sure to give them their time to do what they need to do during their campaign to help all of us that are part of the community. And it brings everybody together knowing the causes that they help support. And like any nonprofit organization, you've got to stay alive. What are some of the ways that you've been raising funds over the last year, year and a half? Oh, we've had all kinds of programs. We've had everything from a mini golf tournament, and we have had yard sales, and a prize-winning calendar, and also we had our first annual walk-a-thon this year in August that was just wonderful with all generations involved. And um, what happens if I'm an organization that has what I consider excess, you know, maybe computers which are out, quote, outdated, or some of the other stuff, whether it's furniture or different things that could help the senior center? Oh, certainly they can contact us and uh, see if we are able to use them at the center. I think uh, many organizations like ourselves are very appreciative of people that uh, think of us as they're having to move <coughs> out the old and bring in the new. Uh, we need to update as well. I think, I talk, didn't CNS a couple years ago, I think they um, gave out to offered a lot of nonprofits furniture and tables to update, <laughs> update their stuff. Yes, they did. It was quite a uh, bargain basement <laughs> sort of thing. And actually, we fitted everything in the senior center from uh, furniture in the parlor to uh, tables and chairs for the back room. And it was a combination of everything. It, we really uh, redid the senior center and have much more comfortable furniture and uh, made it really nice for the seniors. Because I don't think a lot of people, a lot of people think the only way you donate is with cash, but there's an awful lot of other ways that you can donate to help the center become more productive, more beneficial to the community while reducing cost. Absolutely. In-kind donations are, are <coughs> very, very helpful. And another in-kind donation a lot of people don't always labor, just the fact of coming and helping supply and labor. And volunteerism is so important because obviously we cannot pay everybody to come and help lead the programs, maybe do some work around the building, uh, help even in the office somehow, help with some of our events or not just fundraising but other events that we have going on for the seniors, help in our gardens. And it's amazing. We have so many things that are going on. And uh, anybody can help, whatever their interests are. We would love to have them help. And this is the, it's, it's a tough one, but a lot of people don't talk about it. People have been known to leave money in, in their wills to nonprofits, nonprofits mm -hmm. that have played an important part in their life, or mom or dad went here, and mom, this made mom and dad happy in their last years. Yes, and um, it's really remembering uh, what those moments were, what the Senior Center meant to you, what perhaps another organization meant to you, and remembering them in some way. And everybody has a legacy, and everybody has a story, and it's having those memories continue to be remembered of how important it was as part of their lives. And we were talking, I think we were talking before, I think we'll show it on, on the next, next clip, your kitchen. You got a brand new kitchen that was built, mm -hmm. and I th you had one individual that I think in her will left like $5,000 to help build the kitchen. And that kitchen now, for example, on Thanksgiving, you give a great meal to anybody that wants to show up on, on Thanksgiving. Um, well, actually, not on Thanksgiving Day. Okay. We do have on other days where there's a fabulous meal that does come out of that kitchen. And um, it's just wonderful. It brought us up to date. The, the kitchen was pretty outdated for, 
and it has really helped the other organizations to bring food to efficiently be able to serve the food as it was very hard for them before. And it's also um, availability for people to rent the space and to use the kitchen if they want an anniversary party, a birthday party, a baby shower, or even to have meetings and so forth or a Christmas party. We are available for that as well. And another thing about kitchen, we have more and more seniors who don't have money, especially women who stay at home and really uh, malnutrition, malnourished. Yes. yes. And so the kitchen really provides meals for them. They get them out, they get to socialize, and they get fed. Yes, that's correct. Uh, HCS does a great job with that. And Meals on Wheels is a very important program in this country for seniors. And for those that can get out of the house, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that's what the Senior Center is about, that they can come and socialize meet and greet and find new friends, maybe see some old friends they haven't seen in a long time. And that really helps them get through their days or uh, at least helps abate that loneliness they may feel when they're all alone uh, at home for all those hours. Well, this first session went um, pretty quick. We're getting ready to wrap up and we'll get ready for our next part, portion of the show of the Senior Center. Is there anything that you would really like to <clears throat> to add to this except we need money, we need help? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think all nonprofits know, need yeah. money and need help. And uh, it's these, as it's you said, like economic time. times. I, I think that is with everybody. Um, I think probably the most important thing I'd like to say is we can't forget our seniors in the community. Whether they're our grandparents, our aunts and uncles, our neighbors next door. Our seniors are a very vibrant part of this community, and um, the care for them is just as important, even if it's a cup of coffee with friends, and um, to be able to have a quality of life for the, for the rest of their lives is just as important as all other aspects of our community. So again, the hour went quick, and um, I want to make sure we can welcome everybody back for the second portion of the Keene Senior Center. I think it's really important that you come back and I want to thank you for being here and I expect you to be back for next week, right? Well, thank you very <laughs> much. I look forward to it. Okay, and thank you and have a good Labor Day weekend. Refreshments provided by G. Housen Distributors. Premium beverages delivered.